back for another TCH session. If you guys like pocket aces, you're gonna like this vlog. If you guys like full houses, you're gonna like this vlog. Let's do it. First hand for me, we got pocket nines, under the gun plus two. We see under the gun straddle for $10. That won't be enough. We bump it up to 40 and the button and under the gun make the call. So we're going to a flop three ways in the middle of this sandwich here. And the flop comes 10 deuce deuce with two clubs. Checks to me. And yes, we're multi-way. Yes, there's a card higher than our pocket pair, but I still want a C bet here. Now, maybe it's not like a pure C bet 100% of the time, but in this game, I want a C bet. These guys can have a lot of stuff here in this Texas environment, and we want to charge it and protect our nines from more over cards that could come. So I make it 50 and it goes fold, fold. We take it down. We're back at the poker mecca today, meeting up with the boys again for a late night session. Let's go. First hand for us, we've got the ladies in early position. We open to 25 over a limp and get two callers. Flop comes 10 high and I'm first to act. I decided to bet pretty big here, about $65, charge some draws as well as get value from any pairs and we get one caller. Turns a five, it's a great card because now we're beating 10-9 as well. I size up to 120 and this guy makes a call again. I'm putting him on some sort of 10x holding and the river is another 10. Oh my gosh, that's one of the worst cards in the deck. Uh, maybe he has some draws as well and we can allow him to bluff, but I'm pretty sure he just got there. I check it over to him and he bets small. 155, not sure if it's ever a bluff for this sizing, but I'm getting such an insane price here. Pot is $600 and it's only 155 to call, so we only have to be right like 20% of the time. I decide that for that price, I just gotta pay it off and see. I make the call and he flips over an interesting hand that I did not expect to see, pocket jellos. We have him pipped here and we scoop in this pot. Unfortunate that the river wasn't a dud because we probably could have gotten stacks in. Real quick, take one second out of your day. Let's get 1,000 likes this episode. I came and sat down and some guy was jamming all in blind between $200 and $500, and that's why I slow play in this next hand. Let's get into it. There's never a bad time to look down at pocket aces, and now is the very best time because we have the player jamming every hand. U1 opens to 20. This is the rare time that I will slow play. I just flat $20, hoping to get that action player to jam folds the action player on the button and he just calls 20 not good for us but we're going three ways to a flop with a very strong hand which comes ace 10 10 how about that we are not losing this hand you want it makes 35 dollars we just need to figure out how to extract the most money i decide i'm just going to call and that's going to allow our action player to jam with his 10 and the action player folds unfortunate for us we're going off to a turn which is a three of clubs this board is getting even more juicy and the under the gun one player keeps betting for sixty dollars i think this bet shows a lot of strength i want him to commit his stack with a 10 or a flush so i think that slow playing is the probably the best play and actually one that i would advocate for but i raise now hoping he has a big hand like a flush or a 10 that can call a big bet now and on the river but unfortunately i after a while of thinking he does make the fold. Wish we would have made a little bit more money, but uh, happy with the result nonetheless. This hand we have ace four of clubs in the hijack. We see under the gun plus one, open it up to $25. This was an active player. Now, I don't wanna just call and let the cutoff and button come along and then we don't have position. And then maybe we get squeezed by the small blind or big blind and have to fold the hand like this. I don't like the sounds of those options. I like taking initiative in the hand, isolating a player we think we have a skill advantage over as this guy was an active player. So I go for $75. I make a three bet here with a hand that's not a premium. I've been trying to work this more into my game. The button does not care what I'm trying to do with my game. He cold calls the 75 and under the gun plus one calls as well. So plan did not go how we thought it would. We're now going three ways in a three bet pot, not in position and with a mediocre hand. The flop comes jack seven three rainbow with one club checks to me. Now, I still like our plan in theory, but this given scenario, I don't feel comfortable continuing on. Uh, so I check it back. The button checks as well though, and we're off to a turn, which is a rainbow four. We pair up, checks to us again. I still don't feel comfortable betting here. I check the button checks as well. So maybe the four is good. We're off to a river, which is the 10 of diamonds, an offsuit card. Under the gun plus one bets 75. 
That's it for us, but the button calls, so we get to see a showdown and what these people called my three bet with, honey. Under the gun plus one has king ten of clubs, and the button takes it down with ten seven of spades. Gosh, nice hand, man. We're playing a notorious $5 hold'em bomb pot now, and we've got king seven when the two boards come ten seven deuce and king king seven. Middle pair in a boat, I bet $15, and only one player calls. The turn on both boards is insignificant, an 8 and a 5. This guy's got 240 in a stack, so I bet $40 here, planning to put him to the test on the river. He makes a call, and the rivers are a 6 and a 10. Pretty safe cards. I stick with the plan here and jam all in for $200, and he doesn't hesitate to snap call. Assuming he's either got a king and we're scooping this, or he might have a better hand on the top board. Anyways, I flip over my hand and he shows me King 10 offsuit for the better top pair on one board and the rivered better boat on the bottom board. Unfortunate cooler here. Luckily, he didn't have too much more in his stack and we double this guy up. For the second time tonight, I could say look down at pocket aces. We're under the gun. I call five looking to limp re-raise. Button raises to $35. The big blind makes the call. And now we got to pick a sizing to get them both in, but also to charge. We make it $125, which is a little bit on the smaller side for me. Button to make the fold. And the big blind player is sticking around. He makes the call. So we're heads up to a flop, which comes eight, six, Five rainbow. This is not a good board for pocket aces, so when he checks to me, I think this is a pretty good time to just check it back and get two streets of value. The turn is the nine of hearts, putting a one-liner out there in the big blind. He leads out for $200. He knows here that I do not have any sevens in my range, and he is right. Uh, we're not gonna let him off that easy. We make the call, have that minimum defense frequency. River is the four of hearts, and the big blind player puts out a hefty bet of $350. We have an absolute pure bluff catcher here. I do think that we have narrowed his range to a pretty good hand when he calls the $125. So he's not gonna have too many random sevens. And again, like I said, I gotta have some hands I can call with here. I'm not laying down my aces. If you got it, you got it. I make the call and the big blind flips over, jack 10 of clubs. That is not a straight, so we win with a nice hero call on the river. This hand we have ace king offsuit. We're under the gun plus two and we go for the sneaky limp with devious intentions. The hijack falls for the trap. He raises to 25 and the button goes for the three bet to 75. We're loving it, folds back to us. The limp four bet is inbound. We make it big, $275 and they both fold. We win $100 just like that. Lots of short stacks at this table and they're trying to move some action. We've got the ladies in the small blind again. There's an open to 20 from one of these short stacks. He only has about 200 in his stack. So I threw about small here to 60, hoping to get it all in soon. But he obliges immediately before any cards comes out and rips it all in. I immediately call and we're off to a run out. Here we go. We hit a set, but the board runs out with four spades. I flip over my hand and he mucks. So good news, he didn't have a spade there and we stack an opponent at the table. Let's keep going. Look down at 10 at nine of diamonds in the low jack. There's a $10 straddle in play. I decided to raise it up to $45, increasing my sizing to drive the blinds out hopefully have position and that does work we see just two calls from the big blind and the straddler so we're going three ways to a flop which is pretty good six four three all diamonds great flop obviously but i do find it pretty hard to get value when you flop a flush i bet 80 dollars when it checks to me the big blind folds and the under the gun makes the call he obviously can have better flushes than us we only have the 10 high the turn is the seven of hearts when it checks to me i want to bet a sizing that will get called by a single high diamond holding like an ace of diamonds or king of diamonds but i don't want to give him a good price to draw so i think the best sizing for that is 275 dollars and it might be a little bit too much as he makes the fold and asks to rabbit hunt the river Either way, we win the hand and we're on to the next. This hand, we've got the pocket jellos under the gun plus one playing six handed here under the gun straddles to 10. We bump it up to 40 and only the button calls. Now this guy was very tilted. He had just lost a $2,000 pot moments ago. So let's see if we can get some money out of him. The flop is almost too good when it's Jack six, three rainbow. So dry. We've got the stone cold nutter butters. Most of the time I'm going to check here. 
because we have this board so locked up. I think this time, given that this guy's really tilted and we are in Texas, I think we could get away with the C bet here, maybe on the smaller side, and he'd continue with like anything. I do go for the more standard, in my opinion, check with like the mega nuts, and he checks it back. The turn is the ace of spades, second spade, and now it's time to bet. Hopefully he's got an ace. I make it 65, and he makes the call. So fingers crossed he's got an ace. Fingers crossed times a million when the river is an offsuit ace, which means if he had an ace, we're gonna make some money. Pot's around 225, we're gonna size up because an ace ain't folding. I bet close to the whole size of the pot in $200, and the button makes the fold, damn. Next one's a fun one. We've got 10-9 suited on the button. There are two limps. I open a 25, and only one of the limpers calls. Slop comes queen-6-3 with two spades, so we've got a flush draw and some backdoor straight possibilities. He checks. I bet 25, and he makes a call. Turn is another queen. This is where things get interesting. He checks to me, and I'm not sure if we want to continue bluffing on this card or not. If we do, I don't think it makes very much sense to bet super big, because if I had a queen here, I'd want to get value. If I had an over pair, I wouldn't want to bet too big to make him fold his smaller pairs. And so I should probably do the same with any bluffs as well. I bet 60 and he makes a call once again. River is an eight. He checks it over to me. And now I've got a decision on my hands as we completely bricked and we're sitting with 10 high. I bet what I think looks pretty value heavy. I lean on a bet of $150 and he goes into the tank says i think you got a flush draw here and calls <laughs> well man he called me out on the spot read me like a book i flip over my hand and he shows he called us down with the juicy 10-6 offsuit gotta love one two texas poker action when under the gun one looked down at pocket sixes i just call the five the under the gun two calls five and hijack raises it up to forty dollars punish the limpers i make the call to set mind and the under the gun two player makes the call and off to a flop three ways which comes six four four what are these flops i'm loving it great day for us and we check it on over to the aggressor and unfortunately he checks it back the turn is a juicy one the eight of clubs if we were heads up i would definitely go for the check raise play but instead i don't want to risk it checking again let me know if that's bad or not. I lead out for 50, and unfortunately, they both make the fold. Pretty easy day for us when you're flopping like this. All right, here's a hand you don't usually see coming from me. We got 10-9 offsuit on the button. Hear me out. The hijack has limped, and it's on us. I know you guys have been there before. The button's the best place in poker. These cards are really close together and decently high, so I limp as well. I make it $5. The small blind limps and the big blind checks. We're off to a flop which comes Jack-10-8 Rainbow. Pretty good for 10-9 offsuit. I should start playing this more often. We got middle pair and an open ender. Checks to me, I make it 15. Small blind folds, but the big blind and the hijack make the call. Off to a turn, which is interesting. It's the nine of spades. Second spade now puts a four liner out there, removes our straight potential and gives straight potential to these other guys. So when it checks to me, I don't really feel great about two pair in this specific spot. I check it back. The river is pretty chill. It's the 10 of clubs giving us a boat. Now I'm praying they've got it all. Straights, two pairs, trips, you name it. The big blind leads out for $40. This is awesome. Hijack folds. There is so much good stuff to be had here. He's leading. I wanna raise and I wanna raise big. I make it $200. He thinks about it and makes the fold. What do you think he had? It's getting late into the night. That's when we look down at pocket eights and open to $20. We get one call before the cutoff three bets to $60. I make the call and so does the other player. Here comes the flop, eight, seven, three with two clubs. We flop top set. I check, the other player checks, and now the initial three better goes all in for $450 total. I decide to play it sneaky and just make the call. The other player, hopefully we can string him along. And I hear two glorious words from him as well. All in, I snap call faster than you can even imagine. And the turn comes another eight. We drill quads. The river is a 10 of spades. What do these players have? I show my quads and we see that the other caller had pocket sevens from middle set. The cutoff had nine six suited for a flopped open ender and he actually drilled the straight on the river. 
but ended up being in third place behind quads and a boat. This is one of the dirtiest coolers I've ever put on someone ever before in my life, but we scoop it in a massive pot now, bringing us to way over positive for the night. Let's go. We were in the game for 700 and just cashed out for 2,070. Solid. I was in the game for 1,000, out for 1,500. Good session. We won $305. Let's go. Thanks for watching, guys.